In this video we're going to see how to create a photo that's black and white with some color in it. We'll see how to go from this to this. Or, if you want, to this. Hi, this is Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com. Let's go over to Photoshop Elements and get started. I'm using Photoshop Elements 14 for this video, but it'll work the same in any version of Elements newer than version 8. The first step is to duplicate the background layer. To do that, press Command-J on a Mac, or it would be Control-J on a PC. Now you can see that we have an exact duplicate of the background layer in the Layers panel, and it's named Layer 1 by default. Next, we're going to convert Layer 1 to black and white. To do that, go up to the Enhance menu and choose Convert to Black and White. The Convert to Black and White dialog box appears. Near the bottom of the box is a choice of different styles to choose from. You can click on each style to see how they look from the preview in the top right of the dialog box. There's also some sliders over to the right that you can mess around with if you want. I'm going to choose this style called Scenic Landscape and press OK to close the dialog box and apply the change. You can see the black and white version in the active image area and also over in the layers panel you can see that the thumbnail for layer 1 is now black and white. We still have our full color version safely unchanged on the background layer. Now let's add a layer mask to layer 1. To do that click on the little add a mask icon in the layers panel. It looks like a circle inside of a square. Now we see our layer mask thumbnail to the right of our regular thumbnail on layer 1. Notice that we have this light blue border around the thumbnail of the layer mask. That indicates that the layer mask is active. If I double click on the regular thumbnail for layer 1, now that has the blue border around it telling us that it's active. Right now we want the layer mask to be active so let's click on it to make it active. Just so you know, in Photoshop Elements 13 and 14, to make the regular thumbnail active, you have to double click on it. But to make the layer mask thumbnail active, you just have to click once. In older versions of Elements, you just click once to activate either one of the thumbnails. If you don't understand how layer masks work, you can go to my website at EssentialPhotoshopElements.com and look at the navigation bar on the left side of the page. Under the Help section, click on the link that's named All About Layers. Then scroll down to Lesson 3, Layer Masks, and click on it to see a full explanation of layer masks, including some videos. So now we can just paint over the area of our photo that we want to bring the color back. Let's bring it back to this big flower, the one that's kind of in the center here. To do that, we need to use the brush tool, and the brush tool paints with whatever the foreground color is. So let's make the brush tool active by clicking on it in the toolbox. The regular brush tool shares that spot in the toolbox with two other tools. So if you see a different looking brush in that spot of the toolbox, click on it anyway and then go down to the tool options down here. So if you see like this brush in the toolbox, go ahead and click on it and then go down to the tool options and click on the regular brush tool from down there to make it active. So now we have the layer mask active in the layers panel and we have the brush tool active in the toolbox. Just one more thing to check. Remember I said that the brush tool paints with whatever color the foreground color is. With layer masks white reveals and black conceals. And we want to conceal the black and white version of that big flower in our photo so that the color version of the flower can show through from the background layer. So we need the foreground color to be black. And if you look at the foreground color, you can see that right now it's white. And the square below the foreground color, which is called the background color, is black. So if we can just switch around the colors of the foreground and background colors, we would have our black foreground color. 
and that's exactly what this little curved arrow does when you click on it. So let's click on it. Now the foreground color is set to black so we can start painting back the color. Let's move our cursor into the active image area and you can see that the cursor for the brush tool is a circle. The size of that circle indicates the size that our brush will paint with. You can quickly change the size of the brush by pressing the left or right bracket keys on your keyboard. They're located to the right of the letter P for Peterson on the keyboard. The left bracket key makes the brush smaller each time you press it, and the right bracket key makes it larger. So I'm going to make my brush a little bigger by pressing the right bracket key a few times. And we're finally ready to paint. We can move our cursor over the area where we want the color to be and just click and continue holding down the mouse button as we drag over the flower. And I'm going to kind of go around the outside edge of the flower first. And then we'll come back and uh, finish off the center. So now I can make my brush even a little bigger and just fill in the rest of the flower area. Let's look over at the layers panel. You can see that the layer mask has black on it to indicate where we painted over our image. Can you see that the black area on the layer mask is concealing? Remember, black conceals. It's concealing or hiding that part of layer 1, which is the layer that the layer mask is on. And because it's hiding that part of the black and white layer, we can now see that area of the layer below layer 1, which is our background layer, which is full color. We can see that come through in, over in the active image area. Now, if you accidentally include an area that you don't want, for example, I brushed over a petal of this other flower here, and yes, I did it on purpose so I could show you this. Because white reveals and black conceals, I want to switch my foreground color to white and paint over that area to reveal that area of layer 1. So just click on the curved arrow to switch the foreground and background colors again. And now we can paint over that area with white. And I'll make my brush a little smaller. And just paint, paint out over that petal. That's part of the beauty of layer masks. They let you show and hide whichever part of a layer that you want without deleting any pixels from your image. Now I'm going to throw away layer 1 by dragging it to the trash icon in the layers panel and show you how quickly this process really is. So step 1 is to duplicate the background layer by pressing Command or Control J. Step 2 is con to convert the new layer to black and white by going up to the Enhance menu and choosing Convert to Black and White and then select a style and click OK to close the box and accept that change. Step 3 is to add a layer mask by clicking on the Add a Mask icon in the Layers panel. And Step 4 is to use the Brush tool and paint with the foreground color set to black over the area of the photo where you want to see the color. I'll set my foreground color to black. Just paint over my flower again. And I'm going to switch my foreground color to white so I can clean up some of these areas that I messed up on. And now I'm going to switch back to black and get some of these areas here. 
and that's good enough for our purposes. I just wanted to sh give you an idea that once you kind of know the steps, you can go through it really quickly. And that's all there is to it. But I want to give you one optional bonus step. Sometimes the photo might look a little better if instead of being black and white, you have just a hint of the original color in those black and white areas. And you can quickly do that by lowering the opacity a little on the black and white layer. So to do that, place your cursor over the word opacity in the layers panel, and then click and drag over towards the left. And I'm going to just bring it down to about 75 percent and you can see some of that color started to come back through in the areas that we did have originally all black and white and i think that works pretty well for this photo we can check out the original and our after view by clicking on the eye next to the black and white layer so i'll click on it that's the before then i'll click on the eye again and that's after so before and after and that wraps up this tutorial on how to make your photo black and white with some color in it. I hope you found this video helpful. Until next time, this is Rick saying take care.